What's up guys, Justin here with the CG Essentials. So in today's video, I want to check out some of the new features contained inside of the newest version of Sanctus Library version 3.0. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Sanctus Library is a tool that we've talked about before, but basically it's a procedural materials library, but it's more than that. It's basically a procedural materials and tool library. And so basically what it is, is it's a collection of a ton of different procedural assets. And so when we say procedural assets, what we mean is it's basically a collection of things that are adjustable. So because these are procedural, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit more, because these are procedural, basically what that means is that means that you can adjust them directly inside of Blender in order to make them do different things. So you can drag sliders in order to adjust the amount of displacement that a material has. You can adjust the roughness. All of those things are generated procedurally inside of Blender, giving you a ton of control over what you can create. And so one of the things that I'm always impressed about is the number of things that Sanctus is adding to this add-on. Like every time he puts out a new release, he's just got a ton of new things. And this is no exception. So um, in the 3.0 update, you can find what he's changed by going into his documentation page. And so you can see all of the different things that he's been adding. And in particular, we're going to focus a lot on new assets and tools that he's added, but he's also continuing to add things like materials. And so you can see here that within the new version, he's added he's added 28 new materials, and he, and he actually gets pretty in depth in these in a video on his YouTube channel. So I'm not going to get like way in depth on these, but basically he's got new brick materials, he's got new fabric materials, um, and you can see that they're looking really good. And so in particular, I wanted to look at uh, his new brick materials, which are basically tools designed to allow you to adjust things like the size of your bricks. So notice how, for example, there's a type in here. And if I adjust the type, then your brick is going to look different. So I can use this to adjust if this is a red brick, if it's a gray brick, anything like that using the shape slider right here, but then you can also adjust the size of those bricks. So for example, say that I wanted these to be narrower, I could change this to maybe like a 0.2, and notice how those bricks are going to be smaller. But you've also got the ability in here to adjust things like the mortar size and the mortar thickness. So for example, if I was to take this mortar thickness and make it a little bigger, notice how this is going to adjust on this page. And we'll just kind of crank it just so you can see. You don't really want your mortar to be that thick. But notice how this is being procedurally generated inside of Blender so that you have full control over the kinds of materials that are being created. So you can also do things like randomizing the offset of your bricks. So if you want this to be a little less uniform. Notice how you can randomize that offset using this slider right here. You can also adjust if the bricks have an offset at all using the offset input. So creating different kinds of bricks in Blender can be super, super easy. And so in addition, we've got some new tile materials. And um, notice how you can adjust things like the roughness of the tile using this slider right here. And notice how this is a little bit more lightweight than that brick material. So some of these are more lightweight than others. Um, some of them are a little heavier on your computer, but you can adjust things again, like the mortar size um, on your material, as well as some other features like adding tilt to the tile, other things like that. And so then you've also got some cool stones. So say that I apply this generic marble to this Suzanne model, Right here, you've got options for things like adjusting the color and the brightness of the stone, as well as other things having to do with the surface, right? So you can select like how rough it is. You can adjust the vein intensity on the stone, which is actually super cool. I never even would have thought of something like that being adjustable. Um, you can also add cracks, but you can kind of see how this is adding cracks to the marble and you can adjust the amount of cracks as well as the seed of the cracks, which is going to adjust where those cracks are going to occur using this slider right here. Um, so we've got this tool right here. We've got another material, which is super interesting, which is the road material. So you can find this road material, and this is actually an adjustable road material. So you can go through and, for example, you can adjust things like the direction that the road is facing. 
right? So I can adjust it this way or this way. You can also adjust the width of the dashed line on the road. So notice how I can make those white lines wider or narrower, as well as the double lines. This is also going to have tools in here for adding cracks and dents, as well as puddles on your road as well. And so I did also want to focus on some of the assets and tools that are currently contained in here, because he's got a bunch of interesting tools um, that I think uh, maybe get overlooked when you're looking at this add-on. So, um, for example, he's got tools like his neon sign generator. So I can take this and click on Add New. That's going to generate a sign right here. We'll go ahead and rotate this 90. Let's go negative 90 degrees. But it's basically going to generate a sign that is adjustable. So you can use this, and maybe we'll rotate this so that it's standing up. But basically, this is a 100% procedural sign. What that means is that means that you can toggle every one of these things on and off in here. So you can set, for example, if those lights are animated by toggling this checkbox right here, as well as giving you the ability to 100% adjust the tubes that are generated in here. And you can also adjust the text. So if I scroll down here, for example, um, and we go to the text section, and we put our string in here. So say that we were just type in Sanctus, then tab out of this. <clears throat> Notice what this is going to do is this is going to take this, and it's going to basically generate that word. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. 180 degrees right here but you can adjust the text you can adjust the size of the text the character spacing all of that different stuff now one thing I'm not a hundred percent sure about is if you can actually adjust the um, font that's in here I would imagine that you can but I don't know how so um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that one but this just creates like a really adjustable editable sign directly in blender and so he's added this cool moss generator basically what the moss generator does is it allows you to draw on a surface and it's going to generate moss based on where you draw so if i draw a curve on here like this notice what it's doing is it's generating moss and you can adjust things like the density of flowers that are created in here you can also adjust the scale of that moss. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you can adjust the color of the moss that's generated. So it's just a really fast way to generate moss with curves in here. So in his building section, he's got this really cool plank generator. Um, the plank generator, unlike applying materials, is actually going to generate planks, like three-dimensional planks in your 3D space. So you can see how this is actually creating those planks. You can adjust the number of bad nails that are in here, the number of nails that are in here in general, as well as adjusting all of the different planks themselves. So if you want to create like a deck or something like that, this is actually a really cool tool for doing that. And so one cool thing about this is this will actually respect your more complex meshes in here. So if you have a mesh that um, has like uh, holes in it or something like that, this is actually going to respect that geometry. And so one tool that I really like is the polygonal array function. So what that does is it allows you to find a surface. So notice how I can mouse over these different surfaces and it's going to place an array based on those surfaces. And so one of the really cool things about this is this when you work with a surface like this, this actually has an option to auto center on faces. And so this is going to find the center of the face and place the object on there. And it's probably best if we apply a material to this. Just so you can see what this is doing a little bit better. But um, this gives you the ability to really adjust those arrays. And so you can see if I adjust the radius, for example, this keeps this centered on the surface, but this is actually going to fall down further along the surface right here. So this is actually a really great tool for creating arrays. So one thing that I like about this is not only can you create these circular arrays, but if I go to place on surface right here and I add a new array, and I'm just going to center it on this surface right here. Notice how there's an option to do a rectangular array rather than a circular array. And you can adjust the size of that array 
like this. And so one really cool tool is found under nature, and it's basically a snow trail simulation. And so what this does is it creates a snow trail, snow object, but you can reference a collection. And notice how I've got this Suzanne in here, but if I play this, and then I move it around, and it's a little hard to see, but you can kind of see it. I'll show you more in a second. But if I move it around, notice what this is doing, is this is basically simulating a trail in the snow inside of Blender. And so we've also got a tool for generating welds on a surface. So just if I draw on this surface right here, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a metal weld that kind of matches that material that's on here. And those welds are adjustable too, so you can adjust the roughness of the weld material, so how reflective they are, as well as things like the spacing, which you can use in order to make the weld look, uh, look uh, better or worse, depending on the quality of the weld. So you can use curves in order to generate welds inside of Sanctus Library. So this is why I'm always impressed by the updates to this add-on. I actually don't have enough time to film everything about all the new features. Um, but if you are looking for a great procedural library, you should definitely check this out. I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.